listening. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are out there, but lovely that some of you are. And you might wonder what this first slide is about. Just have a read. There were almost 200 antibiotic resistant infections a day across England in 2019. So, I hope you can now see a more donkey appropriate screen. Carol, tell me, because I don't think you can. Uh, no, we can't, Anna, sorry. We can only see the um, that first antibiotic screen. It all worked beautifully last time, but something's certainly not working this time. I promise everybody we did practice this about 10 minutes ago. Anyway. Yeah, just just um, hold on everybody till we get this right. It was wonderful 10 minutes ago. I'm not just saying that. I'm sure computers know when you need them to behave. We've still just got that static screen. I will cheer loudly when we see the second one, Anna. Keep talking, Carol. I'll, I'll keep talking. It. What can I say? <laughs> well, I hope everybody here has seen part one. If you haven't, you can catch up with part one on YouTube. Um, as I said, it's part two tonight. There's probably about 20 minutes of chat. Oops, and we've just lost the presentation completely, but we can all see each other. Um, I'm sure Anna will get the presentation back in a moment. Um, there'll be about 20 minutes of chat, and then Anna will be asking questions. Thereafter, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask them on the Donkey Breed Society group on Facebook. Um, Anna, we can see your presenter view at the moment. That's any help to you. Um, anybody else, if you ask questions on that Donkey Breed Society group, you could tag Anna and she may pick up an answer, or it may be that somebody else can um, indeed you can ask any question about anything at all on there somebody may or may not know the answer but actually within the society we can probably find somebody who does so you're still not getting anything carol i'm getting your presenter view of it with your notes underneath you don't you don't want that try from beginning I normally switch off and switch on again at this stage. Okay. Yes, you're switching off. <laughs> Unclick <laughs> presenter view, Anna. Yes, um, Trudy's just said that. What, what Anna is trying to do, Trudy, is to have, she's got two monitors in front of her, presenter view on one that she's looking at and the actual just the pure slides for us. So it seems to have got itself locked up. Um, Carol, you could talk about some of the events we're having, like the donkey walk in June. Um, yes, um, though, of course, this is nationwide rather than, than just the East. Um, I think, first of all, what I'll just mention is some more topics that we want to cover in seminars like this. Um, if you can think of anything you'd really like to be covered, please put it on the Donkey Breed Society group and we'll pick it up and have a look at it. But we're thinking of doing things, how donkeys think, because they think and therefore are trained very differently from horses and ponies. Um, how to fit a saddle, how to fit a bridle, how to fit a driving bridle and harness. What sort of equipment do you want to just lead a donkey safely? What sort of equipment do you want if you're going to ride? Um, that's primarily aimed at children, but also for people with large donkeys, riding large donkeys. What about long reining, which is in itself 
a step towards driving, but is also a, a great thing to do on its own. Um, carriages cost quite a bit of money and you can have an awful lot of fun long reigning without them. Agility, in-hand dressage, ridden dressage, driven dressage, pack saddles. Oh, Anna, I think we've just got the right thing. Really? We have. I'll stop yabbering and I'll, I'll come back and, uh, and let you carry on. Just give a couple of seconds and off you go again, Anna. Just give me two minutes because while all you lovely guys have got pictures of yourselves on my screen, I can't see anything else. Okay, just tell me that's okay. Yes, perfect. Perfect. Uh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a donkey vet, not a, not a technician. Um, and I literally did switch off and switch on again and hey presto, it worked. So, welcome back to Worms. Last time we had a quick look at some of the more common donkey worms, not all of them by any means. And this time we'll remind ourselves about the life cycle of the small red worm, because this is the one that pretty much every donkey will be harboring. We'll explore what we can do to reduce our donkey's worm burden and have a brief look at the deworming products or amphelmintics as we know they're called, on the market. If you're familiar with the life cycle and its significance, then that will be your chance to make a cup of tea and go away for a few minutes. But in my experience of chatting to owners, it's not a concept that's widely understood. So I make no apology for going through it again. Now, if I was giving this talk about 30 years ago, it would all have been so easy. All the worming drugs did what they said on the box and the standard protocol was to use them every six to eight weeks and nobody realized the disastrous consequences looming. You'll all be familiar with the R number. We hear about that daily on the news about COVID, but there's a very scary R word in the veterinary world and that is resistance. Drug resistance is the almost inevitable consequence of their misuse and overuse. And as far as amphelmintics are concerned, we have historically done both. Our worms are learning to live with our amphelmintics rather than being killed by them. And these worms pass on the ability to withstand amphelmintics to all their offspring. It's a battle we're losing, so we have to be very strategic in our deworming. Um, it's for this reason I put that first slide up about antibiotic resistance in humans that you've probably heard of. But uh, antibiotics uh, are not the only things that bugs are becoming resistant to. And it's for this reason that with one or two exceptions, I won't be recommending particular worming products for particular worms. And if I hear sighs of disappointment, well, I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. Drug resistance is real, but it is regional. So where your donkeys live makes a difference to what drugs you should use. And I'd really recommend you speak to your vet or other horse and donkey owners in the area to find out which amphelmintics are still effective in your part of the world. As I said in the first part of this talk, no worms complete their whole life cycle within the donkey. Part of their life cycle is in the environment on the grass. If we can break this cycle, we can win the battle against worms. So let's look at how we can break this cycle. Well, we could deny the donkey access to the pasture he poos on. In this country, that's simply not possible. But think about donkeys in the wild. No wild donkey would ever eat food that he had pooed on. There's a wonderful phrase in the veterinary world, and that is the zone of repugnance, an area of grass around the poo that animals simply will not eat. In the wild donkey, he'll spend up to 16 hours a day walking and browsing, so very unlikely to be in the vicinity of larvae emerging from poo and just waiting to be eaten. And in arid desert areas, 
the eggs and larvae wouldn't survive long on the ground anyway. We could stop the poo ever hitting the pasture. Here's a Kenyan donkey wearing a poo bag or donkey diaper. As in this particular part of Kenya, donkeys are banned from town if they deposit poo on the streets. I hope we can discount that one. The single most significant thing we can do is nothing more than poo picking. By picking up all the poo frequently, we can stop the eggs in the poo, having the chance to hatch into larvae and hang around on the grass just waiting to be eaten. If we picked up every bit of poo, as soon as it was deposited, we could completely stop reinfestation of the donkey. And as the worms already in the donkey died of old age, they would not be replaced by young ones and the donkey would become worm free. Remember, the worms don't lay eggs that become new adults entirely within the donkey. The eggs have to come out the back, onto the pasture, hatch into larvae and go back in at the front in order to develop. We can break the life cycle outside the donkey with no drugs at all, just by removing all the poo from the pasture before the eggs have had a chance to hatch. Poo picking isn't just to keep the pasture looking nice, it's the single most important way of reducing the worm burden in your donkeys. Poo picking is recommended to be done at least twice a week, but I'm gonna go further and say it should be done every day. You can expect about 10 piles of poo per donkey per day, and you all hopefully have at least two donkeys. And it's really much easier to pick up 20 piles of poo every day than 60 or 80 piles twice a week. Boredom will set in, and if ever your donkeys are gonna knock the wheelbarrow over, it's going to be when it's absolutely full of poo. And just while we're talking about poo and pasture, harrowing is not to be recommended as it's the ideal way of spreading the worm eggs around. And composting is really good for killing eggs and larvae as long as it's done properly. Now in reality, however meticulous you are, some eggs will get onto the pasture and develop into larvae that your donkeys will eat. So the other point of breaking the cycle is inside the donkey. And that is of course, using drugs that kill the worms. As I said in the introduction, for many years, people just took the easy way out and dosed their animals with anthelmintics every few weeks. And this has been nothing short of a catastrophe. Evolution is happening all the time. And as worms have been bombarded with anthelmintics, some of them have survived through small genetic changes to become resistant to the effects of the drug. This is a classic case of survival of the fittest. And the offspring of these worms will also be resistant. If all the non-resistant worms are killed off, we'll just be left with resistant ones and we might as well give, it, give up administering anthelmintics. Like antibiotic resistance in humans, anthelmintic resistance could be absolutely devastating for both the equine world and for livestock farmers. We've already seen that worms can kill. And if the drugs no longer work, we have nowhere to go regarding treatment. Currently, there are no new anthelmintics in development. Several countries have already banned the routine use of anthelmintics. For example, in Norway and Denmark, you can only get such products through a vet if he feels they are necessary and has actually checked your animals over. No over-the-counter purchases anymore, and it could well happen here. With all this bad news in mind, the recommendation is to only worm if you really need to, and not just because you can. And this is where poo sampling comes in. For most worms, a poo sample can tell you whether your donkey is infested and how heavy that infestation is. This test is called a fecal worm egg count, 
and you can get this done through your vet, commercial labs, or the donkey sanctuary. Although I gather they're not doing them right now because of COVID. The lab will count the number of eggs seen using a microscope and you'll get an answer as the number of eggs per gram of poo. Commercial labs will send you a poo sampling kit and usually a postage paid envelope. So it's all really easy. Anything up to around 200 eggs per gram of poo is considered to represent a safe worm burden for your donkey and no anthelmintics need to be used. And just so you know, each nugget of poo could weigh around 60 grams or two ounces. And one pile of poo is made up of around 25 nuggets of poo. So we're talking about 300,000 eggs in a pile of poo. So about 3 million eggs passed in 24 hours worth of poo. Each adult worm can lay literally thousands of eggs every day. Commercial labs really do offer a good service. I checked on the website of one equine veterinary lab and it offers analysis of four poo samples per year, which is probably all you need, together with a discount on worming products for just 33 pounds. Do bear in mind that most labs will only test for roundworms. So if you want tests for tapeworm and liver fluke, you'll need to ask them. The other test that can be carried out is a fecal egg count reduction test. This is a poo sample taken around two weeks after worming. If the worms have been susceptible to the anthelmintic you administered, there should be a reduction of around 90% of the fecal egg worm count. If there isn't a significant reduction, then it suggests the worms are resistant to the drug you've used. Definitely one to discuss with your vet if that happens. But the rule to stick to is worm because you need to and not because you can. If the egg count is less than around 200 eggs per gram, there is no need to deworm your donkey. As with all rules, there are exceptions and we will come to those. But first, here's a bit of pharmacology. Now, you might think we have a devastating arsenal of drugs, but in fact, there are just four classes of anthelmintics. A lot of names here, but many will be familiar to you. Just bear in mind that each drug has a pharmaceutical name, as you can see on the left, and a brand name that you can see on the right. A human example, you may buy Panadol, which is a brand name, but the actual drug has the pharmaceutical name of paracetamol. You'll see at the bottom praziquantel, and I'm not gonna talk much about this one because it's not recommended for use in donkeys. It's a drug that kills tapeworm and is included in the so-called combination wormers that include two drugs and are used to treat both roundworms and tapeworms in one go. You've perhaps heard of Pramox and Equiland Duo. Widely used in horses, but there have been anecdotal reports of colic in donkeys. So I cannot recommend the use of these combi wormers. Panacure claims to be effective against most of the adult roundworms and insisted cyathostomins, but we'll talk about that later. It's still largely effective against ascarids, so very useful in foals. Pyrantel, such as Pyrotape, also claims to be effective against some adult roundworms, and in double dose is effective against tapeworms. If you do need to treat for tapeworms, this is the drug for you. As I said, the combi wormers are not recommended for use in donkeys. There's no point risking a colic when you can effectively treat in two separate doses. Ivermectin, such as Ecfalan, also claims to be effective against adult stages of roundworms. As far as lungworm is concerned, Ivermectin is the drug of choice, and it's largely still effective against adult cyathostomins. So we have three classes of drugs that are all designed to kill roundworms. 
but just bear in mind that drug resistance is on the increase and is regional. For example, one drug may kill pinworm in Yorkshire, but not in Essex. It's always worth checking with your vet or other local equine keepers, as worm resistance to a drug has to start somewhere and it may have come to an area near you. Not every worm in the country achieves resistance to the drugs at the same time. The manufacturers do recognize the problem and, for example, this is an extract from the data sheet for Panacure. Resistance to fenbendazole has been reported in cyphostomins in horses. Therefore, the use of this product should be based on regional epidemiological information about susceptibility. <laughs> Apart from the infoal mare and foals, of which more later, as far as roundworms are concerned, the only exception to the rule of only worming when a poo sample tells you you need to is in the case of the small redworm, the cyathostomins. Remember, these are the ones that burrow into the gut wall in their cysts, just waiting to all emerge at the right time. Because the encysted larvae don't produce eggs, a poo sample is not diagnostic because the test only looks for eggs. Your donkey could have a really low fecal worm egg count and yet be hooching with insisted larvae. Sadly, it's pretty safe to assume that every donkey in the UK has a burden of these worms, so an annual treatment is recommended. And that treatment is aimed at killing the insisted larvae, to kill them while they're still dormant in their cysts, so they don't all emerge in the late winter or early spring and cause the donkey to be ill. Now I'm not here to prescribe a product for your donkey as your donkeys are not under my care, but I can give you the facts and that will help you decide for yourselves. And of course you can and should consult your own vet. There are two products that are licensed for the treatment of insisted cyathostomins. Panacure, which contains the drug fenbendazole, requires five consecutive days of treatment and I can promise you by day three, you will not be able to catch your donkey. You try telling your donkey it's for his own good, they just won't believe you. I've carried out a detailed survey of lots of donkeys so you don't have to, and I can assure you they're not in favor of the five day treatment. And they vote with their ability to avoid being caught. Larval resistance to this drug is now common and the drug appears to result in a marked inflammatory response as the larvae die off. Equest, which contains the drug moxidectin, is also licensed for killing the insisted larvae, but its license only mentions horses and ponies, not donkeys. However, I can assure you it's been found to be very safe and very effective in literally thousands of donkeys over the years in a single dose, although some resistance has been reported in some areas. And it definitely leads to less of an inflammatory response caused by the larvae dying. Now, just because it's not licensed for donkeys doesn't mean it can't be used, but it should be prescribed by your vet. This drug is our last hope for the control of these deadly worms. So please just use it to kill the insisted larvae. The less it's used, the longer it will take for resistance to become common. There are other products that are effective for killing adult worms and the other internal parasites as we learned from the previous slide. For example, the very familiar ivermectin. I just had here for any horse owners that there is an exciting new development in larval cyathostomin diagnosis, and that's a blood test. Sadly, it's only been validated for use in horses, but it may just be worth asking your vet if he's used it at all in donkeys. Validation and licensing are a talk in themselves, but if you have any questions, just ask. 
Anthelmintics work by interrupting the worm's metabolic processes, so they either starve to death or by causing paralysis. So expect to see dead or dying worms in the poo 24 to 48 hours after treatment. It's really important to get a fairly accurate idea of your donkey's weight, as these are powerful drugs that can have an adverse effect in, if overdosed. Weigh scales are ideal, but you may not have access to these. You could ask a local farmer or your vet to practice if, they're weight, if they have weighing facilities. Otherwise, there's a donkey weight tape that's very easy to use, as you can see from the picture, or you can use the Donkey Sanctuary's weight calculator. And I've put the links for both up here. Underdosing means the worms will not be killed and are more likely to develop resistance. Severe overdosing could result in a very sick donkey. The best thing to do is to get a, a fairly accurate estimate of weight and then add about 10%. A 10% overdose will do no harm to the donkey at all. And talking about overdosing, do just check that you're confident in using the tube of wormer, which has what is called a dial ring. It's like a nut that moves along the plunger of the syringe as you turn it, and you need to keep turning it until it corresponds with the weight of the donkey. Just make sure that dial ring feels really firmly in place, as occasionally they slip and you could end up emptying the whole syringe into the donkey. Most donkeys are very accepting of being wormed, but it's worth just handling your donkey around his mouth frequently so it holds no fear for him. And lots of praise after worming and maybe even a tasty treat, although a scratch on the withers is usually considered high praise by donkeys. Keep dogs away from the poo for a few days as some breeds are very sensitive to the worming drugs. And don't let the poo get into fish ponds as the drugs can kill fish. So we're not going to deworm unless we need to, and we can find out if we need to by getting poo samples analyzed. These are best done throughout the grazing season between around February to November. A poo sample every 12 weeks is ideal. So say February, May, August, and November. The results will inform us as to whether any treatment is needed. And remember anything less than around 200 eggs per gram would not warrant treatment. If you're consistently getting low fecal egg counts, then by all means reduce the number of poo samples, but I would recommend at least two per year. Because the poo sample tells us nothing about the insisted red worms, because they don't shed eggs, and we can assume that every donkey harbors them. The important date to remember is late winter for a treatment with an anthelmintic that kills the insisted larvae before they have time to emerge. And it also kills the adults. And we've talked about the downside of Panicure and the upside of a quest. I must stress, I'm not prescribing here as your donkeys aren't under my care. And of course you can and should consult your vet. In fact, because a quest is not licensed for donkeys, the way you can get hold of it is to ask your vet. Come the late winter, there will be many insisted larvae just waiting for their time to emerge. So this is the best time to hit them with the killer dose. The other worm you may need to treat for is tapeworm because again, the poo sample is not very accurate as the worms don't lay eggs every day, so you might get a false negative result. Check with your vet or other equine owners if they have had a tapeworm infestation confirmed before considering treatment. And bear in mind you have to give a double dose of the drug, such as Embotape or Paratape, to kill tapeworm. It's written on the box, of course, but it's not that obvious. A late autumn treatment, preferably after the first frost is a good time to treat as any eggs shed after that will be killed in the cold weather. So reinfestation is less likely. 
And just so you know, there are now both saliva and blood tests that diagnose tapeworm infestations in horses, but they're not validated for use in donkeys. One to talk to you about, about in case he has experience of using them in donkeys. One more parasite to consider is liver fluke. Again, this parasite doesn't lay eggs every day, so you risk getting a false negative result from a single poo sample. Ask the lab that you use what protocol they recommend in the way of cereal samples. If your donkeys graze wet fields or if they co-graze with sheep or cattle, then ask the farmer if he's had fluke in his livestock and whether they've been treated. And again, you'll need to consult your vet about treatment as there are no products you can buy over the counter that are licensed for use in any equid. Drugs used for cattle and sheep can be effective in treating for fluke, but that will be through your vet. Their brand names are Facinex and Flukiva. And do ask if you want more information about those. Do you remember me mentioning the tiny threadworms that don't harm an adult donkey but may cause fold area? It's a small worm with a long name, Strongyloides westeri. This worm is currently susceptible to ivermectin and it's worth worming the mare within the last few weeks of her pregnancy so she won't pass this worm to the foal in the milk. Now, I appreciate this isn't as easy as it sounds, as donkeys tend to hang on for longer than we ever expect. There's going to be a handout on the DBS website and Facebook pages about suggested worm worming protocols for the mare and foal. Just bear in mind that whatever the mare has, the foal is sure to pick up and that foals have poor immunity. So we have to help them out in the first few months by regular poo sampling and treatments if necessary. So let's summarize where we've got to. Only treat if you need to, and the only way you'll know is to have a dung sample analyzed. If treatment is indicated because of a high worm egg count, do consider having a further sample analyzed a couple of weeks after treatment to see if the treatment has worked. If the egg count hasn't reduced by around 90%, it could indicate that the worms in your donkey are resistant to the drug you've used. You can try using a different class of drug after at least six weeks. Important exceptions are that of a winter treatment for encysted cyphostomins. We really need to carry that one out. And the commonly accepted best drug is moxidectin, which has the best drug, the brand name Equest. If you're in, in an area where tapeworm are present, you can use a double dose of Pyrantel. Brand names are Embertape, Paratape or Strongid. If your donkeys are at risk of liver fluke infestation through grazing wetland or co-grazing with sheep and cattle, do get them tested and talk to your vet about treatment. Make sure you're not underdosing as this greatly increases the chances of resistance developing. And giving a large overdose can be dangerous to the donkey. By using this strategic approach to worms and worming, you can play your part in minimizing the spread of drug resistance. After all, who wants to be beaten by a worm? So, as you know, I use these donkeys as my barometer for whether I've talked for long enough. And I clearly have, as they all have their heads in the trough. One of them isn't even coming up for air by the look of it. Thank you very much for listening. I hope these couple of talks have demystified worms for you. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have. I wish it could all be very straightforward as it probably was a few decades ago before overuse led to drug resistance. But the fact is we're now stuck with drug resistance and have to control worms very strategically. If anyone has a few million pounds to spare, please invest in research to find a new class of anthelmintic that will wipe out cyphostomins because boy, do we need it. 
Thanks again and enjoy your donkeys.